First question is how do you, do you deal with the legislators considering that Labour Party is probably not in control of the legislative arm of the government. Quite frankly, I have been through this as a governor. When I was elected and sworn in as a governor, I have 30 House members not from my party. In fact, nobody from my party was involved. As long as you are pursuing what is right, everybody will go with you because the legislator is insecure in his place. He knows that his people are without job. And that's what he wants. He wants development. What else is he elected to do? It, is, it becomes a problem when you are pursuing transactional policies, which will benefit you, or you are engaging in nepotism where you have to. But if you address it by strictly following the Constitution, which spells out that the system is characterized by simply that will have diversity and all is included and you did the right things. You don't need to worry about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> On the issue of IPOB, maybe you're not following me. Even yesterday, I spoke about Biafra being ended 53 years ago. It's all over the place in this space. I condemn all agitators, but in condemning them, you have to look at what brought about this agitation is all over the place. It's not only IPOB. We have Yoruba Nation movement. We have all sorts. When you have created this level of massive poverty, where 63% of your population is poor, you're going to create all sorts of problems. I was speaking to a British minister this morning. I said we have about 40% unemployment. And we have about 60% youth unemployment, young people in their productive age doing nothing. If you have 15% unemployment in Britain today, you're going to have massive, remember, agitation. Nobody will be able to leave his house. So what you're seeing is a cumulative effect of leadership failure over the years, which will be solved by good governance. When people start seeing justice, fairness, an inclusive government and doing the right thing, yeah. all those things will start reversing itself. Yeah. And that is what me and that is offering. I will talk and discuss with all agitators. Yeah. There's nothing wrong in that. Yeah. People agitate even in my house, and I talk with them. <laughs> so I'll deal with everybody. I'll show you of that. Don't worry about that. On issue of health, yeah. yes, we have a problem with health. We have underinvested, and because our government have not prioritized our development agenda, everybody knows that the only measure of development that is recognized globally today is human development index. And this is hang on three items: life expectancy, which is health. And we are low in that. Nigerian life expectancy today is about 50 something, as against the global average of 72. So we are low. Same in education. So it's to prioritize that. I just gave somebody an example. In the past five years, from 2015 to 2021, Nigerian budget in health is under 2.5 trillion naira for 200 million people is unacceptable. Even this year, our budget for health is about 1.5 trillion. Our budget for education is about 2 trillion. Two of them combined, annual budget is about 3.5 trillion. When your six month budget for subsidy, which is a criminalized, <laughs> listen, if 3.6 trillion, it's unacceptable. You have to put money in key development areas. As Professor Dutton had just mentioned, and I read out here, that what separates country, rich and poor, is health and education. So it's clear. 
So we will deal with it. But he said, how do you cover it? Nations of our size have covered it. How did India, for 1.4 billion people, cover the issue of health? How did Indonesia cover that? We have big nations that have done it well. If we don't know how to do it, we learn from them. There's nothing wrong in learning if you don't know how to do it. 